Welcome everybody to Motocross Action's tested video of the 2023 Honda CRF450 four stroke. Today we have the 50th anniversary edition of the Honda CRF450. You guys might recognize this bike because it is based off of the original Hondas from back in the 80s, 90s, and even the 70s as well. Ken Roxon, Chase Sexton, Jet Lawrence, and Hunter Lawrence, they all rode with the blue seat cover, the gold handlebars, the gold rims at the first round of the Pro Motocross series this summer. And this model is the 50th anniversary edition. Honda's also making a standard 2023 450. This one comes in $300 more than that model. Just a few different aesthetic upgrades and aesthetic differences on this bike, like the blue seat, the gold rims, the gold handlebars, and more. Today, we're gonna be testing this bike, gonna be breaking it down for you guys in this video. What is new on the 2023 bike? There's a few different changes to the chassis and the suspension, and also a few minor changes to the engine and the power delivery on this bike. So let's get into it. a fun couple of days of testing on the 2023 Honda CRF 450. We've had four different test riders swing a leg over this bike and we've taken it to Pro Circuit to Dyno to compare it with the numbers that last year's CRF 450 produced. Long story short, we've learned a lot about this bike in a short amount of time and I'm excited to share with you guys in this video what we learned on the 2023. First off, we got to talk about what Honda updated on their new 450 model for this model season. It's got a lot of little updates, nothing really massive. You definitely can't call this an all new bike. You can't even really call it a new motorcycle. You just have to call it an updated CRF 450. But the good thing is the Honda focused their updates on the two places where MXA has made requests most, and that is to the power plant and to the chassis and suspension. So that's what Honda focused on. They didn't worry about really anything else besides those two aspects of the bike. Honda CRF 450s are beautiful motorcycles to look at with the beautiful red bodywork. We always love the rider triangle, how the foot peg to seat height and the seat height to the handlebars, how that feels. For this motorcycle, like I mentioned at the top of the video, it's the 50th anniversary edition bike. It's kind of like the Yamaha Monster Energy Edition bike, where Yamaha produces a bike with monster graphics on it and charges just a little bit more. It's basically the same thing for this bike. It's not a works edition, and it's not a factory edition 450 with upgraded parts. All the structure on this motorcycle are the same as the stock bike. To celebrate 50 years in motocross, they have the gold rims, the gold handlebars. This bike retails at $9,000. $899 and the stock bike comes in at the same price as the last two years, $9,599. And thanks to Honda for keeping of their new bike the same. Even with inflation going on, even with prices going up all around us, Honda's kept their Sierra 450 at that same price point. So we're thankful for that. Let's dive into the updates on this Sierra 450. Starting with the power plant, the intake port shape is now narrower than it was before for the intake coming into the engine. That same intake funnel is also longer now to give the air a little more time before it gets into the cylinder head. It also has a revised cam profile inside of the engine. The biggest change for this bike power-wise is the throttle body. It has a smaller diameter now on the throttle body going from 46 mil to 44 mil. And it also has updated mapping to work with these new changes and to enhance strength and reduce noise. The muffler body was constructed of heat treated aluminum basically to prevent dings and dents from rocks and uh, crashes on the track. So the new muffler is quieter and a little bit stronger on this bike. Talking about the chassis, Honda's goal was to optimize the frame's rigidity. So they increased material thickness at the front joint of the frame. Next to the bottom of the radiators down there at the T-joint, they added a little bit of more aluminum there. They also increased material at the top shock mount as well. Engine mounts, they were changed from aluminum to steel to get a little more flex and they have a little different shape now. Uh, the shock, it has a stiffer spring rate, which is a huge plus. We've been asking for this. It went from the 5.4 spring to the 5.6. It has revised fork settings as well to complement the new chassis updates. Diving into the specs, I already mentioned the price. Last year, this bike weighed 234 pounds on the scales. We haven't weighed this model yet, but we're assuming it's about the same as they haven't really added or subtracted any weight. Uh, the tires still comes with Dunlop's MX33 tires, so big thumbs up there. And the gearing is the same at 13 49 ratio.
So now let's get into the fun part of the video, the real reason why you guys came here. How do these updates that Honda made to their 2023 450, how do they work on the track? So like I mentioned at the top of the video, we had four MXA test riders, Dennis Stapleton, Brian Medeiros. Brian actually spent all of last season or a lot of last season on our 22 450. We also had Cy Cardiel, and then I was one of the test riders as well. And I've spent a lot of time racing the Honda 450 last year too, doing some West Coast off-road races like the Works and NGPC and SRA off-road races and the Paula National. I raced it earlier this year on a CRF 450. So now for 2023, how did it work on the track? Well, we'll start off with the power. The power updates made to the 23 throttle body, ECU mapping, intake, and cams have answered all of our requests on the CRF 450. This bike was horrible off the bottom end when it first came out in 2021 with this all new engine and all new chassis. It had a dirty feeling off the crack of the throttle and you would know this if you watched any of our videos read our articles or if you rode the bike yourself it was almost like a two stroke with mapping that was completely off so it was real rich on the bottom sometimes it would stall sometimes it would bog sometimes it was just hesitant to get off the bottom end for 2022 the bike was better but not perfect and then the 2022 works edition 450 that came with its own mapping yoshimira exhaust henson clutch basket and a few other minor mods that bike had a great connection between the throttle and the rear wheel and that was definitely our favorite crf 450 we had ridden so far. For 2023, the updates that I mentioned at the beginning made a big improvement over last year's bike and really get this bike very close or similar to what the Works Edition was last year. So it rolls on super smoothly and super crisp, which is exactly what we're looking for when you spend big money to buy a fuel injected four stroke. So all four of the MXA test riders preferred the 2023 power feel over last year's 2022 model, but the initial pickup and the crack of the throttle, that wasn't the only change on this bike. Once we got it on the dyno, we could really tell exactly how big of a difference was and answered and confirmed what we felt on the track. The 2023 Honda 450 is considerably slower than the 2022 and the 2021 models. The 2022 Honda CRF 450 peaked out at 58.2 horsepower on the dyno. The 2023 model with a smaller throttle body, with a longer intake, the narrower intake funnel, the few different changes that they made to the muffler that brought the horsepower down over a full horsepower it went from 58.2 all the way down to 56.8 horsepower peak in map one pretty big difference and you can definitely feel it on the track this new bike is a lot more mellow a lot smoother and definitely doesn't have the wide open high horsepower it had last year saying that it's still extremely fast on the track and also saying that the works edition bike with the yosh muffler and the henson clutch and the updated map that we rode last year that had 60 horsepower and it was still smooth and easy to control but it would just keep on going this 2023 model definitely still feels fast but it's very smooth off the bottom end pulls all the way up to 56.8 horsepower on the dyno and on the track map one is the stock map map two is the mellow map and map three is the aggressive map map one surprisingly was actually the fastest map though on the dyno map two was almost a full horsepower off of it it was detuned quite a bit so from 56 point eight in map one it dropped to fifty five point nine horsepower in map two even more surprisingly the aggressive map was actually slower than map one the stock map fifty six point two horsepower so about a half a horsepower off of map one but that isn't uncommon for aggressive maps just because it is aggressive just because it feels a lot more powerful on the track that doesn't mean that it's actually faster overall top end speed wise the aggressive map certainly picks up a lot quicker coming out of the corners this is a lot more exciting to ride just hitting the corners back to back doing a, a 180 left-hander corner in a rut getting on map one you really give it on get on the gas you can even use some clutch to get out of the corner it gets going smoothly using map three giving it the same amount of gas and clutch you're going to pop out of the rut because it's going to give you so much more power or you're going to wheelie out of the rut depending on how much traction there is so map three is certainly more aggressive certainly more fun map two is certainly more mellow certainly a lot easier to ride and map one that was really our standard at home map where everybody felt the most comfortable on but we do appreciate 
that you can ride three different maps with the stock motorcycle and have three different power bands that all give you, you know, unique characteristics. One thing we do have to know about map three on the spike, the aggressive map, is that when we were going wide open up the steep hills at Glen Helen or down the long straightaway, the start straightaway, we did feel a little bit of detonation, which is definitely not something you want to feel on your Honda 450 right after you buy it. So we're going to talk to Honda, try to figure that out, see if there's any updates or fixes we can get to get rid of that detonation that we found. We also found it on the dyno. It would happen when the bike was at max torque. You could hear just a little bit of clicking inside the engine. So we're going to stay away from map three until we get that figured out, which is kind of a bummer because it's such a fun map to ride in. But uh, that's something you guys should keep an eye on if you do buy this motorcycle. the chassis and suspension and handling of the 2023 CRF 450. This is always the hot topic when it comes to Hondas. In general, Honda has always had a twitchy character since they introduced their all new 450 back in 2009. The 2008 model, that is like the highlight. Everybody looks back, at least all of our test riders that have ridden that bike always look back with uh, big hard eyes when it comes to the 2008. In 2021, Honda was open and honest saying, hey, we're trying to go back to what we had in 2008. We're trying to get close to that setup with this new frame and engine. And they came out with a frame that was more flexible and uh, Honda, they thought, hey, maybe it was a little bit too flexible so we want to go a little bit stiffer like i said this year they add a little bit of stiffness on the front and to the top shock mount on the new frame they're trying to calm it down and make it a little more stable a bike that is twitchy and a honda really that is always good for turning we never have a problem turning on a honda but bikes that are really good at turning can also be more or less stable when it comes to rough straightaways or rougher tracks so honda is trying to gain some stability on this bike and that's what, what they went for in 2023 were the changes any better for 2020 23. At first, all of our test riders thought that this bike was definitely a step ahead of the 2022. When we got on this bike in the morning at Glen Hun, when the track and the dirt had good traction, good moisture, the ruts were nice, the bumps weren't too big, we all thought that this bike was better than the 2022 model and it took a step in the right direction. However, once the track got more hard pack and drier, we lost a lot of that confidence that we had in the morning and we started focusing a lot more on suspension, trying to get it to work for us on the rougher track. So yes, we're riding it at Glen Helen where the track is a little bit harder base uh, gets rough and sketchy gets a lot of sharp bumps out there that are give you a little bit of harsh feeling definitely make it sketchy but if you're riding this on a track that is smoother not as rough if you're riding it maybe on the east coast where you have more traction I think uh, this bike would handle a lot better and do better with that in last year's test we wrote that the CRF 450 best if you ride it at 80% of your capability that means if you're a novice intermediate pro no matter how good you are if you ride this bike at 80% it'll handle extremely well turn well for you and you have a lot of fun on this bike. But if you push it past 80% and you're really kind of getting close to your limit at 100% of your, your own efforts, that's when it gets a little bit sketchy. This bike wiggles a lot more than some of the other motorcycles and it just takes a little bit of time to get used to that, especially with the stock suspension. If you get the suspension built for you, it fixes a lot of those issues. I got to feel that this past year, racing off-road races with Pro Circuit built off-road suspension, then racing the Paula National with Pro Circuit built motocross suspension. If you're going to get the suspension built for you, it's certainly overlooks a lot of the issues that come on the stocks here at 450. Stock bikes are what we test, stock bikes are what we compare, and you guys are paying close to $10,000 if you're gonna buy this motorcycle, so we wanna let you know what you're gonna get when you pick up this bike at the dealership. For MXA, we felt like the shock was too stiff and it actually overrode the forks this year. Maybe the shock was good, but the forks were a little bit too soft in comparison. To stiffen up the forks, we went in on the clickers, slowed down the rebound, tried to get the forks to hold up a little bit better, but still didn't get the comfort we were looking for. We ended up dropping the sag on the shock from 105 to 107. We went out on the high speed, about a half a turn, and then a full turn, just trying to lower the back end, get a little more stability out of the CRF 450. And we went softer on low speed compression as well on the shock. And we actually tightened up the steering head on the forks, tightened up the steering, all just to give us more confidence and more stability on this bike. We're still not completely content with the stock suspension on the CRF 450. We do think the power is a lot better. The 
that smaller throttle body and just the pickup and the smooth action of the engine is a lot better for 2023, but we're still learning the stock suspension. We're still trying to figure out what settings are gonna be best for this bike. So we're gonna continue testing and putting more time into that before we get into our 2023 450 shootout. And as we continue to write our 2023 Honda 450 race test article that you'll see in a future issue of Motocross Action Magazine. Other aspects that we know and really like about this bike have appreciated the durability of the hydraulic clutch these past two years. It's held up really well for us. We do like that. We also like the upside down air filter. It's not as good as the Austrian brands. It's not as easy to install and remove, but once you figure it out, it is easier than the Hondas used to be putting it in and out of the, of the air box. We also love the rider triangle as mentioned on this bike and the seat has a nice shape to it that makes it easy to get into the right position in the corners. And I also noted that the grip it has on the stock seat cover is pretty good for a stock cover, so not too bad. We've had a lot of fun on the CRF 450 and we're gonna continue testing it as we get further down the road. putting this motorcycle up against the Yamaha, the Kawasaki, the Suzuki, the Gas Gas, the Husqvarna, and the KTM in a future 2023 450 shootout for motocross action. Also subscribe to the magazine so you can read the full test on this bike as we'll have even more information about it so you can make an educated decision before you buy either this motorcycle or if you already bought this motorcycle, if you can learn more about it to make it better for yourself and get yourself more comfortable on the track. Thank you guys for tuning into this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Motocross Action Mag on YouTube. Also motocrossactionmag.com for our website for more bike tests, product tests, race results, news, and more. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.